The enormous importance of theatre in ancient Athens becomes evident in this graceful edifice. It was built by Lysicrates to commemorate the victory of the Dionysia. Lysicrates was the financier or choregos of the winning play about the myth of the god Dionysus. The monument served, in fact, as a pedestal for the bronze tripod set upon its summit, a trophy for the victor of the contest. A copy of this marvelous monument with a tripod on top can be seen in Berlin. After the victory on the Persians, Athens was rebuilt on a grand scale. Magnificent temples arose on the Acropolis. By this time, the orchestra of the Theatre of Dionysus on the southern hillside of the Acropolis was known to be circular. During the Dionysia festival, at the rear of the orchestra, a temporary wooden scanner was placed. The theatre was further excavated to make a more secure foundation for the wooden seats. It's likely that the seats were divided into at least ten different wedges for the ten tribes, which made up the citizens of Attica. Within these sections, one part may have been set aside for women. In the 440s BC, adjacent to the theatre of Dionysus, one of the first permanent roofed European theatres was built, the Odeon of Pericles. It might have been used for a variety of dramatic activities and recitations. Using existing archaeology, one suggests that the roof would have been supported by a forest of columns, resulting in a sideline disaster for at least 40% of the audience. Not until the 4th century BC, under statesman Lygurgus, the theatre of Dionysus was rebuilt in stone. This was the time Menander began producing new comedies. Also, wrecked stone tiers were constructed, where wooden benches resided before. By the time the semi-barbaric king of the Balkans, Alexander the Great, took over the reign of all city-states in Greece, plays were no longer performed exclusively at Dionysian festivals. Many new theatres were built. The best preserved theatre in all of Greece is the theatre at Epidauros. All these so-called Hellenistic theatres were not built in the classical style of the Dionysian theatre in Athens. Probably the most important Hellenistic innovation was the raised stage or Locheion. It's not sure how in the place this heightened stage was used as an acting space.
it is suggested that each of these tiromata could have served as a miniature proscenium arc. The orchestra of Hellenistic theatres often had a two-third circle shape. And then the Romans came, Veni Vidi Vici. In 146 BC, mainland Greece became a Roman province. And for the third time, the Dionysus Theatre in Athens was fundamentally renovated. This time by Roman Emperor Nero in 61 AD. Striking differences with the Hellenistic style is the lowered stage with enlarged surface and a heightened scanner. The orchestra was surrounded by a stone barricade in order to protect the spectators. The scanner was further adorned with many statues and other sculptures. After the first century AD, most of the existing theatres were remodeled to the Roman ideal of theatre architecture, like this theatre at Taramina. In Rome, for a long time, the erection of theatres were thwarted. Only temporary wooden theatres were built. Theatre was deemed a threat to Roman morality. In Greece, the theatre was a symbol of democracy, but the Roman Republic was aristocratic. The oldest truly Roman stone theatre was not built in Rome. It was built by colonists in Pompeii in 75 BC, because they were out of the direct reach of the Roman Senate. At this square in Rome, the few remains of the first Roman stone open-air theatre can be found. The distinguished Roman general and political leader Pompey was permitted to build this theatre in 55 BC. This architecture was copied for nearly all future Roman theatres and amphitheatres. A huge linen or wooden canvas was stretched over the whole of the auditorium to protect the spectators from the sun and rain. This first Roman theatre was also for centuries the greatest theatre in Europe, with a seating capacity of 28,000 spectators. Rivalry between military leaders in Rome led to the erection of two more theatres near the Tiber River. As part of the infallible bread and circuses measures, for controlling the crowds under the reign of the emperors throughout the whole empire, Roman theatres were built. Greek theatres were not enclosed. The audience, especially in the upper part of the auditorium, could see the surrounding countryside as well as the actors and chorus. Contrary to the Greek theatres, most of the Roman theatres were freestanding architectural structures. These are the remains where it all began, the Dionysus Theatre in Athens, with its Greco-Roman orchestra. The first dramas were staged here in 600 BC, and the theatre functioned until at least the 4th century AD. Thus ended a truly remarkable history, for few other theatres can boast thousand years of continuous usage. These are the words of Oscar Brockett. Without his famous book on the history of theatre, our videos would not have been possible.